Hello, my YouTube friends. It's Richard, founder of Short Term Rental University and Airbnb Superhost. Today's video is the things that you need to think about when you start to scale your Airbnb business. Just realize that scaling up is a process. It doesn't happen over a five minute YouTube video, but these are things that you need to start to think about as you plan your journey. And we're gonna break it up into two different buckets. One is sort of the operations, the mechanics of scaling. And then the second one is to think about when you purchase additional properties or rent additional properties, what do you need to do from that perspective? So first up is operations. And here's the key to scaling any business. I don't care what industry you're in, whether it's software, Airbnb, or ground transportation, which is another company that I own. The key to scaling any business is systems and processes. And the key to systems and processes is that they must be sustainable and repeatable. And what that means is they have to be able to be done over an extended period of time, so you're not reinventing the wheel every single time, and they must be repeatable. So it can't be like a one-off where somebody looks at something once, figures out what to do. So think about creating scale via systems and processes that are sustainable and repeatable. By way of example, you're going to become basically an entrepreneur with a stack of freelance helpers. None of these people are gonna be your employee because you don't need them full time, but you need a team of people in each different location that has the exact same job. So you're gonna have a cleaning team, you're gonna have a maintenance team, you're gonna have a, you know, I don't know, repair team. It doesn't really matter what teams you have, but whatever teams you require, Think about building that same stack of teams in every single location and then have your cleaning team do the exact same things in the exact same order in every single location with the caveat that like this home doesn't have a fireplace so they don't have to empty out the ashes, right? But the rest of the stuff, the products they use, the order that they do it, the, um, you know, the fabric softener, all of that stuff you should figure out once and then repeat it. Another key to scale is to remove yourself as much as possible. Now, that's kind of like antithetical to being an Airbnb super host where you and your personality and your brand are there. But what I've done is I've created my templates that my virtual assistant uses. So every single question that comes in, I read, I answer it once, and then I give them the templates so that they can then insert them in the proper questions. Anything that's never been answered comes to me, I answer it once, and that's sort of the rule of thumb that I have with my virtual assistant so that, you know, I can scale and get myself out of the process because in order for me to go from 1 to 5 to 10 to 15 units, I can't be answering all the calendar requests and all of the uh, email requests. So I answer them once and then we scale. At the same time, I've trained my virtual assistant to look at my calendar and we've created templates that she sends out for the check-in, for the checkout, for review requests, and also a timeline when she contacts the cleaning team and gives them a notice of when they need to be there, when the next guests are coming in and so on. So everything is automated and it's on a schedule that we've all been trained on, we all practice, we all know what to expect and when to expect it, and it's sustainable and repeatable. Also think about scaling your maintenance, and there's two types of maintenance. There's preventative maintenance, which you can like schedule, and then there's the unexpected maintenance. So let's start with the routine schedule maintenance. There's things like air filters and um, batteries in the carbon monoxide detectors and things like that. And so you want to just create a schedule in a calendar where your cleaning crew or your handyman crew goes in say twice a year and they do those scheduled maintenance. Think of it as like an oil change in your car. You know you do that every 3,000 miles or every three months. Same thing with your homes. Schedule it, make sure everyone knows what to do, when to do it, and then they execute. And then as far as the unexpected stuff, whether it's a roof repair or anything else, I have my virtual assistant know who my team is and she can make contact with them initially and then put me in touch with them when the time is right. We also use the slow season to fix everything and paint and do everything else that needs to be done. We do that during the slow season. I recently filmed a video about that. Okay, so here's the big question that you're probably thinking about right about now, which is, okay, that's wonderful, but how do I find these people? How do I create my own stack? How do I keep them like loyal to me and working with me? And therein lies the magic, right? Like in every business, it's all about the people that you attract. The best way that I've learned to do it is to network. So when you buy that place, let's just call it in um, ABCville, speak to everyone you know, the broker, the banker, the inspector, the lawnmower, whoever, and say, I'm looking for a cleaning crew. Interview as many cleaning crews as you need. Just try and network, try and refer. When people know that you've been referred to them, generally speaking, they're gonna take you more seriously and be more interested in working with you. And then I always try to 
pay at least fair wage, if not more than the going wage, so that I become a more um, regular employer and I'm more important to them. And then I give them feedback and compliments and so on so that they like working for me and it's not just like a cleaning job. Uh, but finding people is key. And not only is finding people key, the real key to scaling is keeping people. So let's move on to expansion. The very first thing that you need to do is research. Figure out where you want to expand to. I've always aligned my places with my why, and those are places that I like to vacation or travel to where I want to retire in, and that brings me closer to that community. But there's a whole host of other whys. It could be to be purely an investor and get the best return on your investment. We are in the process right now of working with um, AirDNA. We're going to be doing a review online in the next, I don't know, week or so. So check out that site and also wait for our review. I think you'll find it really helpful. But there you're going to see things about like which cities are best, uh, what size units in cities are best or vacation areas, um, as well as average night rental and occupancy and competition. There's a ton of information today that didn't exist when I started doing this five or six years ago. And so you need to be fully briefed on it and use the tools and technology that are there so that you make a very sound and wise long-term investment. So do your research. The second thing I would say is work with a trusted network, again, of people that you are in your stack, and that could include a broker. Find somebody that understands short-term rentals, that understands the market, that understands what you're looking for, give them the parameters, and make them part of your team. So by way of example, the person that I've been working with in Jackson Hole, um, we've done now three deals together, we're doing a fourth, possibly a fifth, and he knows exactly what it is that I'm looking for, and he's gonna start to source more deals and bring them to me on a go-forward basis. That's invaluable, right? Like having somebody on the ground who's your eyes and ears and showing to you things that match my criteria saves me tons of time. Now imagine having these guys in five, six, seven different cities sourcing opportunities for you and you just cherry pick like, oh, I like that one. Try and find good relationships that are bankers, mortgage brokers, lawyers, all of the different trades that you need to buy or lease a place you want to find the same person and just go to them time and time again. Develop that relationship, develop that trust, and trust me, you want to develop all of these relationships in advance of needing them because then when you do really need them, I found the best deal, I really just need you to work with me, they're never going to do that on the first time. But if it's your seventh or tenth deal and you've worked with them for two, three, five years, they're going to know you, they're going to want to work with you, they're going to get the deal done. And that's what differentiates like a rookie from a professional. People that are getting deals done when others wouldn't be able to. It's a huge competitive advantage. Lastly, a big time saving uh, exercise that I recommend is using the same products everywhere that you possibly can. I've created my own kit, I share it with you. These are products that I recommend and I use in all my different homes. If you're interested in looking at my, go ahead and click. And again, in the interest of full disclosure, if you buy anything at the same price on Amazon, we do get a marginal, I don't know, percentage back or something, but it's the same price to you. Nonetheless, create your own kit. So use the same mattresses in all the different properties, the same sheets, the same towels, the same cleaning supplies, the same you know, light bulbs, all the stuff. Make the decision once and use it everywhere. Recognize, of course, that each place has to have its own character and fit the area. So I wouldn't do a beach place with the exact same decor as a mountain ski area, but like all the stuff stuff that's in the house that doesn't really matter, doesn't add to the look and the feel and the vibe, that's all the same. The infrastructure is all the same. Make every decision once. Once you're happy with it, scale it. That's the definition of scale. Make decisions once, execute 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. Sustainable and repeatable. So that's basically it. Introduction to scaling. Again, all the hard work is in like the details and it takes a long time to create your team and your stack and your infrastructure, but it's really well worth it. If you want to go deeper, I'll just remind you we're going to have um, a membership that uh, goes deeper. The link is in the description. And um, go ahead and sign up. Again, we're just taking names right now. We're going live December 1st, and we're really going to take people from A all the way out to like the scale, and I'm super pumped and excited about it. I hope you are too. Please go ahead and like the video, and I'd encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications when we release good videos like this. Thanks so much, and happy hosting.